It's official. We have kicked off Pub 101 in 2024. Welcome, everyone. We are very glad that you are here and um, look forward to spending the next several weeks with you. So briefly, my name is Karen Lauritsen. I'm Senior Director Publishing with the Open Education Network. We are based at the University of Minnesota, but I am uh, based in California, which is where I work from remotely. When I am not working on the Open Textbook Library or supporting Open Textbook Publishing, I love to create wildlife habitat gardens. So I'm particularly excited that it's spring. We've had a fairly wet winter in California and the garden is coming alive. I would also like to welcome all of you on behalf of the Pub 101 Committee. This is a group of people who have been working on improving and maintaining the Pub 101 curriculum, as well as these live experiences that we offer annually. I would also like to acknowledge Amanda Larson, who's the Pub 101 chair. She will be managing chat today, and all of these people are very invested in your success. And they also want you to know that you are not alone. All of us started somewhere at square one with OER publishing, and it can be a bit daunting, but there is a community here to support you. And I hope that uh, Pub 101 gives you the opportunity to get to know many in the community, and there will be ways for us to stay in touch after this experience. So that is our hope for all of you. In terms of our time together today, I'm going to spend a few moments setting the scene in terms of what is Pub 101, some general housekeeping, um, reflecting together on whether this is the right place for you. The short answer is yes, of course. If you're interested, we want you here. Um, but if you're totally new to OER, you may want to start somewhere else because publishing can be kind of hard. Uh, we're going to talk about what is Pub 101, and we're going to do a Q&A with our very special guests, Gabby and Sunny, and hear firsthand um, from them about what it was like getting started with their publishing program. So I will introduce Gabby and Sunny shortly. Setting the scene. So um, thanks to those of you who are saying hello in the chat, please continue to do so. I'm going to basically say hello on behalf of the Open Education Network. I know that many of you may be joining us for the first time because uh, the invitation to Pub 101 is sent to the OEN Google Group, as well as um, to all of the institutions that are members of the OEN through their consortium. So that means that some of you are having your first uh, firsthand experience with us, and we're thrilled to be able to welcome you. Very briefly, we have some guiding principles that uh, direct our work in the Open Education Network. We are a community of people who are working to make education more equitable, more accessible, and the common good, our work towards the common good um, is partly what guides us, as well as our commitment to equity, inclusivity, action, our shared humanity. We are not just people doing a job, but we are whole and complete people. And we work with integrity. And we also can celebrate and share in our abundance, which is part of what Pub 101 is about. Um, there are many templates and resources that have already been created that you can take and adapt for your situation. And so together by sharing, um, we can celebrate the abundance that we have through the work that we do together. So I hope that this very briefly provides a snapshot of the OEN and a little bit of our, um, our personality, if you will, and our values. In terms of Pub 101, this is really designed to be a friendly, informal orientation, a chance for you to consider your vision and capacity for supporting open publishing at your campus. It might be different depending on where you are. And so by no means do we ever mean to suggest there is a right way to do this or you should be doing it this way. We really kind of want to put forth a buffet for you to consider and for you to make a nutritious meal, if you will, um, based on what is out there. We will highlight the adaptable resources that are available to you in the Pub 101 curriculum. And a lot of the work that we'll do together is help you anticipate common issues 
to look ahead if you're just thinking about starting out supporting a project or a program, we want to help you anticipate some things that commonly come up. And Pub 101 is also here to help you lay the foundation of, of knowledge, regardless of what publishing tool you're using. So we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of how to use Pressbooks or Manifold or LaTeX. Um, we're really going to focus on sort of the, the bigger picture or the more administrative questions, all the while focusing on how you can maintain your uh, sort of professional and personal health, if you will your self-care, because there's something about making a book that can be emotionally intense. And so just remembering to, to make some space and um, think about what your capacity is and what you're in a position to do as you support faculty authors with that. A little bit more information about what Pub 101 is about. Again, we're inclusive of all publishing support types. So as we move through the weeks, we'll talk about some of those publishing support types. It might be very light touch. It might be really intense. You're providing editorial services, for example, to your authors or doing different things in between. Again, there is not judgment here or expectation about what we think you should be doing. Um, we are inclusive of all of the different publishing support that may be on offer or you may decide we don't wanna go here and that's welcome too. You do not need to meet a particular definition or level of publishing to be a part of our community. It may simply be something that you're interested in someday. Um, that, that is all it takes to join us. Our goal is for you to consider what publishing means to you and your organization. Publishing is actually a, a, a pretty tough word to define and so the work for you to do is to figure out, well, how, how are we going to define publishing in our institution? And then once you figure that out, uh, we're going to emphasize that it's very important to communicate that definition of publishing or that vision of publishing to your authors and collaborator, collaborators, since publishing can mean many different things to many people. Um, and so we'll spend a lot of time kind of breaking that down together. So you may recall when you registered for Pub 101, we had a question in the Zoom registration form about what you hope to learn. I have selected some of your responses uh, just as a sampling of, um, of what all of you hope to learn. So where to start? That is perfect. That is why Pub 101 is here. Whoever wrote where to start, we're with you. Getting insight from other colleagues. Yes, we're gonna to start today with Gabby and Sunny. Hoping to participate in discussion and learn from peers at other institutions. Absolutely. I would like to emphasize that while each Pub 101 session will have a guest and a host from the Pub 101 committee, many of you may be bringing experience to this and we invite all of you to share your experience. There will always be an opportunity to chime in. Um, so that people can, can learn from you and you can learn from one another. We are gonna talk a lot about how you might be able to best support faculty that are interested in publishing, considering your local context. Sometimes it can be easy to get into a comparison game in life and feel like, oh, I should be offering this or I should be offering that, but we're really gonna emphasize what you're in a position to offer. There are many options. We are gonna talk about what's out there, the pathway to get, getting started, and again, helping you anticipate those challenges. So all of this, it sounds like you're in the right place. Um, I would really like to highlight this last comment, how to get started with helping faculty and authors of OER textbooks with very limited resources. We hear you. And this has been uh, the focus of the Pub 101 committee for the last couple of years. And again, it's part of why we're really trying to offer options to you. And so if as we're going along, you're thinking to yourself, okay, these options are not realistic in my environment, please say something, speak up, and we can brainstorm together about what may or may not work. Okay, a few more. How does AI affect OER development? This is the question of the hour. And we may or may not be able to cover this during Pub 101, but I assure you it is on all of our minds. And we have a couple of different uh, publishing advisory groups, the Pub 101 committee, 
that are actively um, looking at ways to lead these conversations in our community. So if we don't get to it in Pub 101, there are other opportunities to think about this together because it's a huge question and it really is um, something that we want to figure out together. More information about the evaluation of OER to use as talking points with faculty. This of course is really critical as you develop your OER program. It's not the emphasis of Pub 101. Uh, this is more the emphasis of adoption programs uh, that we offer and other support. So um, in the next slide or two, I will talk about options. If, if you're really at the first step of your uh, OER program, you may wanna start with some of these talking points, like you said, kind of how to build buy-in, how to introduce the idea of um, evaluation and adoption of OER, and then saving publishing for a bit later. Legal requirements for OER. Now, I'm not sure what this respondent meant. We are gonna be talking about memorandums of understanding and working with general counsel on intellectual property considerations when developing OER. We'll talk briefly about Creative Commons licenses, but there could be other considerations here that um, may or may not be covered in Pub 101, but please let us know what your specific questions are. Workflows for creating OER, comparisons of publishing platforms. These do exist out there. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on publishing platforms, but we can point you to different resources that exist so that you can share them with faculty and, and get a broad overview yourself. Strengthen understanding of specifics around publishing tools, practicalities of open pedagogy, and how to support faculty. There's a lot there. If you're interested in open pedagogy, we have a separate certificate program and learning circles, um, and I would be happy to share information with you around that. We touch on it briefly in Pub 101 because, of course, involving students in the creation of OER is an important part of publishing. But if you want to go deeper with that, um, I can point you in other directions. So with kind of that snapshot of what you hope to get out of Pub 101, you may be asking yourself, am I in the right place? And again, I will answer yes. If you want to be here, we're thrilled to have you. If you're a very new practitioner, one of these other areas may be a better fit for you. The Creative Commons certificate, we have a certificate in OER librarianship, and there's a couple of other resources here that um, you can access when I share the slides. I will be sharing these slides, of course, they'll all be um, covered in a few moments in terms of uh, our documentation and sharing out of all these things. So um, fear not, these resources will be made available. Okay, that concludes my introductory so far. Now I want to briefly launch a poll and find out how many of you are interested or likely to launch a publishing program at your institution or consortium in 2024 or 2025. So this year or next year. Pick one, just whatever's kind of closest to your current situation. Maybe it's already happening. You are publishing, you have um, experiences that you can share. That's wonderful. Perhaps you're right on the cusp. We're ready to go. We've been thinking about it, but we haven't yet launched a call for proposals. Or you might be more ambivalent. Maybe one day, slow down, we don't know. And some of you might be thinking, I want to learn about the landscape here, but I can't imagine doing this at my current institution. Those are your four options. I will give you another few seconds, and then we can see where we're all at. OK, I'm going to end the poll. 98 participation, 98% 98 participation, which is thrilling. And many of you are in the maybe one day category. And so this is a great place to explore that question. Again, thrilled to have all of you here, regardless of what you're thinking about a publishing program. Thank you very much for your responses. Okay. A couple more words about the Pub 101 spirits. Um, we are going to emphasize time and again, while it may be obvious, it's easy to forget, we are human beings and not publishing machines. You're not alone. There are many people who are here to help you and support you, and there are many ways to publish, and we're just going to share some of many options. 
anytime along the way, let us know what you need. You can let us know in the chat. You can reach out to me via email, which I'll share at the end of these slides. Um, but truly, all of us are very interested in creating a meaningful and useful experience for you. So if we're not hitting the mark, let us know. As I mentioned earlier, this is a rather informal experience. It's not a class. There's no grades. We welcome you. Come when you can. I've heard from some of you, you might have a conflict and you can't make a particular meeting. Totally understand. We record these sessions and do our very best to share them in advance of the next session so that you can um, watch it before our next session, catch up on what you missed. We try to have some fun. It's always evolving. We are every year um, making improvements and changes. And really this is just a beginning. So hopefully um, we'll have the chance to continue to grow together as a community following Pub 101. My last note before we meet uh, Gabby and Sunny, there is a curriculum associated with Pub 101. It is built in Canvas and we are not teaching to the curriculum. We're not going through unit by unit as you may find in a certificate course or a more formal environment. We're complementing the curriculum by speaking thematically about some of the things that are covered. Um, but I do wanna highlight that much of what we'll cover and talk about is included in the curriculum. So if you're wondering about an MOU template, if you're wondering about examples from other institutions, that's where you'll find them is in the Canvas curriculum, along with a lot of helpful tips. Um, we have taken lots of care to make the unit straightforward and supportive. If you want to see for yourself this curriculum right here and now, um, it's at z.umn.edu slash oen dash pub 101. However, Amanda will be sharing a link with all the links so that you can access this um, at, your, at your leisure. If you have not yet had a chance to look at unit one, very briefly, it covers the fact that we are talking about open textbooks specifically, although many of what we'll cover um, in our publishing conversations can be applied to other OER. We are focused on open textbooks, which are free to the end user, the student, of course, and give permissions, typically Creative Commons licenses, for editing. Now, important to know about textbooks because it often plays into um, the process of supporting authors and developing them is textbooks, they have structure. We're all familiar with it. We've all opened up a textbook and seen the pedagogical elements that are inside that organize the information hierarchically, that make them different from monographs, which are much more you know, blocks of text. Um, and that structure and that hierarchy are very important to informing accessibility. And we're really gonna talk about accessibility and inclusion right at the beginning so that it can be at the, at the forefront of your mind and your author's minds as you begin the projects, rather than thinking about it as something to remediate at the end or something to kind of go through a checklist at the end. Um, it's really Im important, I think, to embrace uh, embrace those um, goals right at the forefront. Okay, without further ado, I am delighted to welcome Gabby Hernandez, who is the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, as well as Sunny Pai, who is Digital Initiatives Librarian. OER, University of Hawaii Community Colleges, and campus co-lead at Kapilani Community College. Thank you, Gabby and Sunny, for joining us. Um, really, I've invited both of you here today to welcome this group and to talk a little bit about your experience as uh, people who offer publishing support, run publishing programs, have worked on publishing projects, all the things. And so, Gabby, if we could start with you, how would you describe your publishing experience and what was your starting point? Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I am closer to that, you know, where we're starting. We've done this for a couple of years, but we're a very small publishing institution. Um, the things like, uh, where do you start? How do you have, uh, like, you know, no funding, things like that. Like, how, how do you keep that sustainable over the over years? And that's kind of where we're at to kind of set the stage. So, um, you know, we are really in our publishing um, 
point at the moment, we're really in the like part where faculty are adapting and editing and modifying resources that are in existence. We haven't quite hit that, okay, I'm an I'm a faculty author and I'm ready to start from scratch. So that's kind of where we where we are. We want to support that, but we're trying to start small over time. And in the last five years, our entire textbook affordability program has really focused on the OER adoption and professional development side of it um, because we are a small program. And by a small program, we started with just one scholarly communications librarian and a full-time open education librarian. So even some of you may say like, that's pretty big compared to other institutions that are publishing lots of resources, we're fairly small. And so um, we um, both, we have, I've participated in a lot of those um, um, OER development programs that Karen was talking about earlier. And I highly, highly recommend them because those programs are what really helped me feel comfortable in the OER space and in the publishing space and kind of understand where to begin and how to kind of scaffold it. And that's what we did. We were, we were small. We knew we were only two people and we wanted to one day have a publishing program at UTRGV, but we knew we weren't ready yet. So what we decided instead was we just kind of started scaffolding. Like what would it look like eventually if we did have a publishing program at UTRGV? And we created little things here and there, which really came in handy because kind of out of nowhere, it was like, hey, now you have press books. And we were like, yes, great. But we don't know if we have the staffing and we have zero funding to support um, publishing projects and you know, kind of all the things that go with it. So um, thankfully, we thought about it before we had it. So we already had a little, a couple of little documents made and it helped us. And the first thing we really, really wanted to do was make um, some sort of lib guide or page that showcased what our uh, services that we provided and even more importantly, what services we could not provide, you know, thinking about our sustainability and how many people we have and the other programs that we're running. Yes, we'd like to do publishing support, but we wanted to be very clear on the yeses and the nos in the first conversation with faculty. So they knew exactly what to expect and if they wanted to continue. And so um, two years later, after having press books, we now have six published titles and a couple of more in the works. So it's been, you know, we are really excited to have that number in our press books platform without any major funding for books. So we're, we're happy there. And I think it's important, you know, that you can also set like, like in the chat, we can set our boundaries to what is a success at our campus and not always compare to what other campuses are doing. So that's where I'll start with our program. Thank you, Gabby. Over to you, Sunny. Okay, thanks, Gabby. That was uh, really good to hear. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, well, I was, um, I was in the 2019 cohort, so it feels like um, ancient history now. Um, and starting up, um, and Karen, please keep keep an eye on my time. <laughs> uh, starting up, um, I did have some previous experience with uh, open access and open source content, content um, working for another library. Um, so uh, working with DSpace and Plone, um, which were open systems. So I was a little familiar with that. Um, at um, I To give you context, I'm at a, um, uh, there are seven, I work in a system. And so I'm at Kapiolani Community College. We are one of seven community colleges in a University of Hawaii system. We have seven community colleges and three four years slash graduate schools. And um, at, at first, um, I was uh, my approach was this is what I'm going to do for my college. Then the then it grew into this is what um, we're doing for our community college system, seven colleges, and then it grew into this is what we have to do for our 10 campuses. So um, my frame is all over the place. <laughs> so I get a little <laughs> I get a little confused. Um, but um, starting from um, from the college perspective, I think my first project was um, 
um, a physiology, um, uh, anatomy and physiology lab textbook, um, where I worked closely um, with a faculty member who um, um, found some materials, we found materials together, and we basically had to develop it together. At the system, so that's from the community college perspective. At the system level, we were fortunate to have a press book site that was supported um, by our top administration. And so that was established. Um, and they did um, um, provide us with somebody who would be um, managing the press book site. Um, so we were able to uh, work first with the original librarian and then the um, and then now the OER technologist. Um, um, Billy Mikey. Um, and so we were able to um, go through the process of uh, putting that together. I was very fortunate. My first author was someone who had already published um, a uh, commercial textbook. She was on her way to publish a second textbook um, and uh, was in negotiations with her publishers. This is another textbook that she was working on, which is a sleep textbook. Um, we happened to just have a very serendipitous conversation on the roadside, and she said, you know, Amy, my, you know, my colleague Amy said that I need to talk to you. So we just started talking, and she, her first impression of OER was that, you know, this is, it was a crazy idea and not, you know, not worth looking into at all. Um, I was fortunate uh, to have that conversation with her, and, and she just really became very, very enthused about the idea because... Uh, two of our most core values is um, uh, diversity and equity. So she saw OER as really a good way to express those ideals. Um, and she's she has, working with her, she's um, basically, she's published at least three works. Um, the last work, it was a collaboration of the 10 campuses with faculty from all 10 campuses. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of how I started. Um, Pub 101 really helped me. Uh, this was be, uh, this was at the start of the sleep textbook. Um, and um, as Karen, I'm so glad that Karen highlighted um, the difference between a monograph and a textbook. That was such a huge lesson for me, which I took away with. At the time, uh, we were working with um, a publishing company, Scribe. I'm assuming that's still an option. Um, and we had a very, very positive um, working relationship with Scribe. We worked with Scribe to produce the sleep textbook. Um, in terms of um, publishing platforms, we work with all kinds of platforms. I've worked with Libertex. I have authors who are um, basically using GitHub. Um, and there are also authors who have completely expanded the idea of textbook. It's not necessarily a single entity, but they're, they're developing open courses in their um, learning man in our learning management systems. So again, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Well, Sunny, <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Gabby, again. I think it reflects, you know, the reality oftentimes of supporting publishing. It's like, I've got this project over here, and then I had this conversation, and that relationship evolved, and then it turned out we got a Pressbooks platform, you know, so it, it can really be like that. I see, Gabby, you're nodding, too. Yeah, I think, I think what was... Um... Uh, what I had to learn was just to be really agile because uh, I was trying and maybe this was wrong or, or not because uh, I feel uh, spread a little thin, but I felt like I, I needed to meet the uh, faculty where they were. So, um, you know, um, uh, and the person who's on GitHub is basically a, she's a she's a programmer. She's a computer science professor. She just she had just finished her PhD, so it was just so much easier for her, just you just to forget press books and just go straight to you know law tech and 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 do all her all her programming and publishing from her own. At first, it was her own server. My job at that point was to help her get a server, um, and then we, she eventually decided, okay, let's migrate this to GitHub because our our campus servers were not reliable. So I just got to be you know I was just trying to be there where the instructors were. Yeah, I, I appreciate that comment about agility, and I think it it connects also with the comment in the chat about setting boundaries, like figuring out, you know, what am I a position to offer? Oh, I can help with the server. You know, this is a discrete thing that I can do um, to to make this project happen, which is fantastic. Um, 
And I think too that um, you're highlighting how sometimes the um, the platform can drive the project as well. And so this is something that we'll continue talking about as the weeks go by. We've already heard so many different uh, publishing tools mentioned and a lot of the consideration on your end will be, you know, do I want to basically say to faculty, hey, you know, work with whatever works for you, but I don't know GitHub. I'm not in a position to support GitHub. You know, these are all the all the things that you may find yourself negotiating. And so if it sounds overwhelming right now, um, just with this first question, please um, know that we'll continue talking about these questions as the weeks go on. So um, Gabby and Sunny, you've both talked a little bit about what you've learned so far. Um, any other lessons that you think are particularly useful or that stand out and guide you as you move forward? Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and start again. So I one of my main lessons, and I'm sure y'all all know this, is that this process just takes so much time. Like it's it's a lot. There's time to build up the infrastructure itself before you even say yes to a project. Like, what are you even going to offer? Time even like this to participate in professional development opportunities to understand what even we're getting into. Um, it takes time to get the word out that the service even exists. I know that was a big thing on our campus that OER was brand new. Faculty didn't know my position was new. So it was lots and lots of marketing and getting the word out, talking to faculty and having them understand what this is. Um, and it's also taking us, taking us a lot of time um, to advocate for internal funding and apply for external funding grants to try to, you know, compensate our faculty for the amount of work that goes into this. Um, we haven't yet been, been able to accomplish that, but I'm still hopeful that we, it's like, there's, it's there, it's so close. We feel like it's right in our reach, but it hasn't, you know, dropped in the line yet. So you know, that all, all of this takes time um, apart from the time it actually takes to then create a resource. So um, at UTRGV, we definitely have faculty interest, um, especially those who have gone through our professional development programs. Um, I'm seeing that transition. You know, we, we really focused in the beginning on just what is OER, just adopt it as is. It's a free resource and that's kind of where we started. And now we're able to make that transition. Like now that they know what this definition is, now like what are what are the what can OER truly do, which is all the pedagogical practices and the adaption and creating resources that reflect your student population and that fit your unique, you know, region or goals or area. And so our faculty are now understanding that piece and are really engaged and really interested in it. And so um, what I've learned a lot with with the it takes time is that also projects can can take many forms. So some of the things that are that's happening at UTRGV, again, without traditional funding, because if we did have traditional funding, we'd be able to say, okay, we're going to build textbooks and this is what it's going to look like. But, you know, since we don't have that yet, we wanted to make sure that our Pressbooks subscription was being used and we could see that resources were being in there. So it wasn't, hey, we gave you this thing and now you haven't been able to do anything with it. Um, so some of the stuff that we've been able to to add has been um, a course reader that one of our faculty is like, hey, I have all these um, public domain resources that I've used over the years. Do you have a nice, and I heard you have a platform where I could put this, you know, can, can I do that? And it was like, absolutely. So it was something that was just in a Word document that we were able to put into Pressbooks to give it that really nice readability. Um, our College of Health Professions had a resource that they were working on, and it wasn't a traditional textbook, but it's something that pr they provide to all of their students, which is um, a professional, I like building your professional identity. So it's a resource that introduces students to professionalism and soft skills. So it, it was, again, it's like, this isn't a textbook, but we want all of our students to have easy access to it. We want to share. Um, so those are some of the ideas, you know, to give you what could press book or what could publishing look like to advocate to have like these are the resources that were created that faculty have already done we have them in our platform and then utilizing that to say i have 10 other faculty who have 
all of these projects that are ready and raring to go once you give us the funding to be able to do it. So instead of asking for funding and waiting for the projects, I have been collecting all the projects over all the years and you know, telling faculty, this is a possibility, can I use your project to advocate for you? And so that's kind of how we've decided to go, which has also given us the time to, again, think about our capacity, what could we possibly provide, you know, and, and things like that. So it's, it is kind of a lot of here and there, like taking it as it comes and deciding what ca you can and cannot provide. Um, some other possible ideas is I had a faculty member reach out to me who said um, she has, she's an educator, she, she teaches in the education field. And one of her class projects is her students create bilingual um, kids stories and she wants those to kind of be in a volume so that way teachers in the valley and anywhere could teach them because the word, there's always a lack of bilingual resources so those are the kind of things the little projects that we've been pulling together to been to you know kind of beef up our catalog of resources things that are already happening on campus that we're putting together in a nice format and then that gives examples to other faculty and they're like, oh, this is really nice. I want to be able to do that. And it's kind of continuing that cycle. So um, lessons learned comes and goes. Um, faculty may already have resources that they've created and you can utilize that um, kind of in to talk about what open publishing is. So um, those are some of the things I've learned. Okay, um, well, for, uh, let's see, for me, I guess, uh, um, getting back to the uh, uh, working with Scribe, which was, a, uh, I, I guess I would describe them as a back end publishing service. Um, very, very professional group. Um, uh, we, uh, we, we relied on them heavily for their um, editing, editing work. Um, we just don't have the capacity to provide um, editing support. And um, although although the author the the book that we worked on um, I thought was well written, they really were able to bring it up to a whole other level of editing. And what I found interesting was she said um, her editing experience with Scribe was actually better than her editing experience with the commercial publisher. So she was very impressed with their abilities. Plus another author who also took a look at her first manuscript and then her second manuscript and was just checking, you know, kind of as a, as a copy editor said that it was, it was a considerable improvement. Um, so that was, that was good for me to hear. Um, the, uh, the production process working with Scribe um, came out to, along with quote unquote heavy editing came, uh, came out to under, um, five thousand dollars, forty-one, uh, basically forty-one ten. Um, so, uh, and what they and what they offered was um, uh, uh, they they did a lot of they had a, a project coordinator um, who uh, really helped us formulate this the structuring and the process of of the book production. Um, they gave us advice about things like, well, you don't really, you, you shouldn't use this chapter as an intro, you should make this the first chapter, those kinds of things. Um, they were, they gave us a lot of expertise. We had more than 130 images. They gave us a lot of expertise on images because this was a science textbook. Um, and um, so they were very helpful with that. Um, and our go my goal was I wanted something that would be easily printable. Um, so um, I wanted a printable PDF so that, you know, a student could just, you know, students could uh, print out chapters, you know, one at a time or even just a couple pages, but also uh, would be uh, readable on online. So um, they were able to get for us um, an EPUB uh, and also a, um, um, a very nicely laid out printable PDF, which is, which requires, they worked in InDesign. So this, they brought in a whole slew of expertise, which we just simply had no capacity for. And it would, it would have taken my occasional student assistant uh, position person, you know, six months to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so it's much better to work with them. Now, when I tried to justify um, the uh, $4,000 bill uh, with my head librarian and my colleagues, their immediate reaction was, oh my, this is expensive. 
so we're we're just so used to the our mentality is we're so used to doing things you know um on our own as free as possible um and and we do an okay job but but for the for the cost i'm not sure whether it would cost the same today but for the cost um we really got um i think of an excellent professional job um and and um i learned a great deal during the process so um so sometimes what that i guess what i'm trying to say is sometimes you just have to pay for the service if you just don't have that uh, bandwidth of capacity um an, an interesting anecdote um uh, was um about a year ago um this was the science of sleep textbook um a, a, an instructor on the mainland um, continental U.S. Um, uh, basically contacted our DSpace administrator because I have the textbook on on DSpace, saying that uh, they are requesting a um, um, an accessible version of the PDF, which I had what I had um, saved up on DSpace was the printable PDF, um, which is very different from an accessible PDF. All the markup has to be for printing, not not for accessibility, um, and I just didn't have that. I didn't make that connection uh, uh, in the old days when we were when we were doing this. Um, we had an EPUB. Um, so what we uh, what I had to do was I double checked with our administration because I know that um, we have to provide um, all, for all the materials we put online. We have to have an accessible version. I wanted to double check um, whether or not I had to provide both a, an accessible EPUB and also an accessible uh, print PDF. I also had the uh, Microsoft markup version. I know I'm getting really technical here. Um, <laughs> the the basic the basic uh, what I learned was our our system said you have to provide something accessible. Um, you uh, you only have to provide one format. So um, we took the EPUB, went back to Scribe, and said, "Can you do this? Uh, can you enhance the accessibility?" And by then, it had been several years. So they did a total rescrub uh, of the EPUB, and they ran it through accessibility tests. Um, there were a couple snags because it, you know, the accessibility uh, um, uh, software was asking, "Why don't you have a?" An ISBN number, but we just kind of we got through the snags, and now I'm I'm very confident we have an accessible EPUB, so we were able to get back to um, the instructor and say this is what we have for you. Uh, we we the the PDF is really for printing, and it'll do a great job, I promise you. But um, but the uh, but we can provide you with an accessible EPUB, uh, which your uh, which your students can use online. Um, so that's, um, again, that's relying on expertise when you have the funding to be able to do that. Yeah. And I think the cost for that was about um, um, $240. To me, it was worth the time. Plus, they also updated some of the information uh, in the edit process. Thank so you that was both. one lesson I learned. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's a lot of lessons, Sunny. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you're highlighting a lot of the, the technicalities, as you mentioned, and the desire that everyone shares to create accessible resources and what sometimes is entailed in creating those resources. And I appreciate your point that, um, you know, if your budget allows, sometimes it is more economical um, to work with professionals who do this all the time, who can, you know, create a good working relationship with your author and do these things that would have a huge learning curve for someone in your department. You know, if that is a possibility, um, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, that can be a, a good path to follow. And Gabby, I really appreciate your comment about um, time and sort of the building blocks of developing a publishing program and the opportunities that arise when you ask people or hear from people in terms of what they already have, um, what already exists and that you may be able to help them um, provide. So it may not be something like, oh, you know, please create this from scratch. Instead it's, oh, we can help you bring this to more students or we can help you get this into an accessible format. And so um, thank you both for reflecting on the many things you've learned. It does sound like a lot. And so um, for any of you who are feeling overwhelmed or trying to find your way um, through those responses, we will continue to break down a lot of what they, they talked about as these weeks go on. So briefly, as we 
um, start to wind down the hour, what would you recommend to people who are here, to someone who's just getting started? There's been a question in the chat about, you know, what's the right tool? I need a tool. Um, how do you kind of, what, what would you offer in terms of guidance for, for people just starting out? I touched on this a little bit and with that you said earlier, but definitely creating a process that works for your institutional needs um, and departmental capacity. Um, when looking at other open publishing programs, you know, and figuring out who you want to use as your model, remember we're rarely comparing apples to apples. Um, they may have different funding structures or different, more people, fewer people assigned to work on these uh, projects and and, and then also thinking about their levels of faculty engagement and participation and interests. You could have the exact same model, but maybe it's not working because your faculty are at a different interest level. Um, so there's a whole host of things that could be different, but in saying that you're in the right place because there is an entire community of people that are here and ready to help you on this publishing journey. So definitely take a look at that departmental capacity um, and create a program that fits within those parameters. You can always start small and grow over time, and it's often harder to go backwards where you took on a whole bunch of projects and then realize, uh oh, like we actually can't be there. We need to be here. So, um, you know, and there will be more guidance on this and more people and more conversations as you go through the Pub 101 program. And the other quick little thing is just, I think it just be a safe space for faculty too. Um, I, honest, I honestly believe that as long as you promote your services and are openly available and also open with what you can and can't provide that, you know, what you're, not that you're not willing, but you just, there's not a possibility to, um, that it really helps. And my experience is that at UTRGV is that usually the faculty that want to openly publish are the same faculty that are engaged in like a thousand other things on campus. So they just, they want to do it all from the bottom of their heart, but they may not, they also may be overextended in their capacities. So um, those are the, some of the things I've learned. I mean, even just today, I right before this, I got a call from a faculty who's in, been engaged with our program for years. And he called and was like, I think it's time. I think I can finally publish. And that came about not because he didn't want to, but because there was a change in um, leadership in his department that's now allowing more diversity in the course material selection process. So there's just so many factors on campus that could be happening. So, you know, don't always say like, oh, my program isn't successful. There could be other things that are helping. So just being a safe space for faculty to allow them to tell you their story and helping them, you know, where you can. Yeah, I, I like very much what Gabby said. I mean, if you're just starting uh, with the program, um, you're you're first of all you're making yourself your your work um, available, and um, um, you know helping your faculty becoming aware of what's possible. Start small, uh, definitely start small. Um, start with uh, maybe. Um, uh, you know, uh, introduction to OER workshops, start developing a following and awareness. I think um, the, the reason why we focused on um, when we first started our first at the very, very beginning, even before thinking about publishing, just just getting faculty aware of what OER is. That was that was uh, that was our first hurdle to get people talking about it. Um, there has been so much um, really good research going on about the benefits of OER and the benefits of um, TXC Zero programs. Um, uh, back in 2019, we didn't have that kind of data, that kind of those kind of studies to bring in. Uh, you know, when we we're when we were talking with our faculty, uh, do a little bit of a research scan. There's a lot of material out there um, to help persuade both your administrators and your faculty. And different data will speak to. Uh, each of those populations differently. So understand that that you're you're going to be talking to at least three different kinds of populations, students, faculty, and your administration. Um, and so build interest, um, build build a sense of confidence that this is something that's really worth getting into. Um, uh, and you will find the early adopters um, and and they will they will step out first. and perhaps, um, 
um, grow them, uh, grow with them slowly uh, by introducing them to materials, uh, well constructed materials that are already out there, like OpenStax, like some of the materials that you'll find at Open Textbook Library. Start with adopting, you know, and then and then move into light modification, then more modification. <laughs> <laughs> and then at that point, you know, you'll you'll have some expertise under your belt and, and some of the problems that come up, including funding, including technical skill um, that might uh, help you to slowly evolve into a little bit more publishing um, for a lot of people. Uh, we work closely with a, a few instructional designers. A lot of people are just more comfortable for working from within their LMSs. So, what's the definition of a textbook? You know, I don't, I don't want to make this too crazy, <laughs> but you know, um, we have a lot of people who are who are uh, taking their course materials that they've already created, and they're building from within their LMSs. Um, you know, OER courses. Um, and then referring out to, you know, materials, OER materials or, or modifying and, and supplying them. So just be open to what faculty are, are comfortable with because a huge, a huge challenge is um, their technical ability. Um, That's true. I'm, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you, Sunny. Um, <laughs> but I really, I really appreciate what you're saying about, you know, see what people are open to and find those connections, those people who will become your advocate. It's a, it makes a huge difference as you build your programs. Now, I know we only have a few minutes left, but I'm going to um, fit in a few more things before we adjourn. Thank you for the questions you've been posing in the chat as we've been going along. Um, I will emphasize uh, what you've been hearing us say is you're not alone and everyone here has something to contribute. We are going to do this work together. Um, Amanda has already dropped in the link tree. I just wanna highlight that all the different documents that you'll need for Pub 101, you can find in that link tree. That includes the orientation document where the slides will be linked from, the Canvas curriculum, our YouTube playlist where we will post all the videos, transcripts and unit feedback. So please do um, make a note of that link. The orientation document is sometimes referred to as the one-stop doc. It will be updated weekly. And uh, if you would like to know the very moment that the videos become available, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and it will notify you. Now, um, we've been talking a lot about faculty and both Gabby and Sunny mentioned how important it is to build those relationships. The Pub 101 committee is working on adapting this very experience for a faculty audience so that in the future, particularly if you're at a less resource institution, you don't have the time, you can send your faculty to the Pub 101 experience designed especially for them. But we will need your help. And so every week we're going to ask you what it is that you want faculty to know about what we've covered that week. And so this week, we ask what you want faculty to know about working with you as you make open textbooks with them. So Amanda just dropped the Padlet into the chat. And we do have a couple moments. If you could please follow that link, and you should be able to make a note. Amanda, would you like to provide any guidance? A sure thing. When you load the site, there is a plus sign in a round button at the very bottom right of the page. You can click that to open a note, or you can use the plus sign next to the session title. So session one kickoff April 10, there's a plus there, and that will also open up a note. You can write a fantastic little message there. And at the bottom, if you care about aesthetics, I do, you can change the color from black to a different color and then click publish and your, uh, I guess they're like sticky notes will show up in the session one heading. Thanks, Amanda. We're using Padlet so that as a committee, we're gathering all of your input in one place. You'll be able to see it, we'll be able to see it, and it will offer us guidance as we make these revisions for our faculty audience. So please take a moment and share your reflections with us. I knowing that many of you are beginners, I wanted to create a question this week that was um, broad enough. So if you feel like you're a beginner, maybe your answer to this question is, I want faculty to know that I'm doing this for the first time. That was something someone mentioned in the chat, like 
maybe find someone who you enjoy working with and, and reveal to them, you know, I'm figuring this out as I go. And that's what I want you to know. So please do contribute. As you do that, I will preview next week's topic. We are going to be covering accessibility. We will be joined by Jacqueline Frank, who is the Instruction and Accessibility Librarian at Montana State University. That session will be hosted by our Pub 101 committee member, Heather Capret, who is Senior Media Developer and Instructional Designer at Cleveland State University. So you will be hearing from new folks next week. In anticipation of that accessibility session, you can choose to do some homework if you wish. Go to the orientation one-stop doc, the link of which you can find in the link tree. You'll look for homework listed under week one. And then there is a link to an open textbook that has been created in a Google doc, which is a very fine way to make a textbook. You can use Google doc, docs. Um, and please post your description or alt tags as a comment. And Jackie has agreed to review your alt tags and provide um, feedback. So it's a great way to um, give it a go and get some feedback from someone with expertise in that area. Please join me in thanking Gabby and Sunny for joining us and sharing the many things that they have learned so far. I would like to thank all of you as well for your commitment to student success, your willingness to learn more with us, your interest in joining us, and your engagement in the process. You have a lot on your plate. I know it's a big deal to set aside an hour a week, and the committee and I and all of us at the OEN are really glad that you're choosing to spend some time with us. So without further ado, I will check the chat to see if there are any remaining questions. If not, we will see all of you again here next week. Thanks again, Gabby and Sunny. And thanks all of you. Farewell. <laughs>